Hey, this is Vance, KV4P. I wanted to just give you an update on some of the features that have been added to the project since we launched it back in early October. Um, haven't posted anything on YouTube since then, so unless you're, you're in the Discord, you probably haven't seen what's been going on. Um, so I'll just go through the list. Uh, I'll add timestamps to the uh, video so you can jump to parts you're interested in or skip those that, you're, that you don't care about. So first up, uh, the thing I've probably been asked the most about is there's now a couple kits available for purchase on the website. Um, not for me, there are actually community members who uh, put together kits and offered them for sale. Um, one of them uh, is a professional electronics engineer and actually designed uh, an even better PCB than the original one, and so you can order that, that's 2.0. Um, and then there's another one that's available um, on eBay and AliExpress and a bunch of others, and I link to both of them on the kv4p.com website on the Quick Start page. Um, so if you look at step one there, you can find the kits for the project. So if you've been putting it off because you don't want to buy all the parts separately, um, or you don't want to have to do a group order because a lot of the parts can't be bought um, in single units, then okay, now onto the radio itself. Um, I'm going to be kind of demoing here and recording my screen while I try to show you these features. Um, let me just turn my volume up and you can hear the first thing. Friday. So what, what do we have here? So I, uh, we extended the reception range from uh, 134 to 174 megahertz. Um, what that lets you do is to listen to any FM broadcast in any of those frequencies, including um, the NOAA weather radio stations, at least in the US. And so um, I was just playing some of the NOAA weather. You can just hear the weather in your area using this. Um, you can't transmit outside the ham band, but you can tune anywhere in there. You may also notice um, we added an S meter, so beneath the frequency, uh, you'll see the little little bar graph that lights up as, uh, I'll see if I can point the antenna somewhere here, yeah, there we go. So you can see the S meter goes up and down as the uh, reception strength goes up and down. <clears throat> you may also notice, uh, if you watched the earlier videos, there's now uh, four digits in the frequency, so that means you can now tune in 500 hertz um, uh, increments. Uh, because some channel uh, spacing, especially in certain countries, are 12.5 kilohertz, and uh, in the earlier release, you couldn't uh, you couldn't tune that specifically. Uh, in the earlier videos, um, I mentioned, or I was in the comments talking about how harmonic suppression was one of the main things that I wanted to improve. Uh, so as of uh, PCB design 1.7b, the harmonic suppression is really good. Uh, so it's below, uh, it's more than 50 dB below on the second harmonic uh, and uh, well below what's required from a microwatt standpoint. So uh, if you've been putting it off waiting for better harmonic suppression, you can grab one of those kits or the parts that are on the website and harmonic suppression is in a really good place right now. Um, and the new versions of the PCB coming out, uh, 2.0 uh, and, and others are going to have even better suppression and even better power output. So uh, keep an eye out. All right, I want to demonstrate the APRS features because there's been a lot of improvements to APRS. So um, first off, you know, if you saw text chat in the prior demo videos, that's APRS behind the scenes. Uh, but now it's really a full featured APRS client. Um, there's still more we want to add, but it's it's got quite a bit at this point. So um, if you just want to listen into APRS, of course, in the US, it's 144.39 megahertz. Um, you can use it on any simplex frequency you want, like if it's with your friends or your club or whatever, but if you want to listen in on everybody that's using APRS, go to 144.39 and go to the APRS chat tab in the app. And you can probably tell right away, all the messages have a lot better formatting now, and it doesn't just print the text chat messages, but it can do all types of APR messages. So uh, you might notice towards the bottom here that there's a, uh, there's a weather uh, station nearby who sends out APRS uh, weather reports periodically, so that has a nicely formatted way to see what's going on. Um, there's people reporting their position. Um, if I were to tap on, uh, let's tap actually on the, the little pin next to the, the weather report. It opens up your map application, usually Google Maps, but whatever map application you have on your device, and it will actually show you where that APR message, APRS message came from. So you can now, uh, you know, for example, let's say you're hiking with a friend and you're using this, you could uh, get their location when they send a message uh, and find each other and, you know, go meet up using Google Maps or whatever it is that you use. Um, let's see, what else do we have on here? Uh, if there's a message that this receives that it doesn't know how to handle, uh, because there's some really 
kind of specific APRS messages that are for very specific third-party uh, software, it now prints it all out. So it will never hide a message. It will just print out the raw contents of the message if it doesn't know what it is and it can't format it nicely. Um, so you may notice uh, the second message on the screen right now, um, it says raw and then the text. That was the body of the message. So a lot of people ask for this because they just want to monitor APRS and they, they you know appreciate the formatting when we can do it, but they didn't want to miss anything. So now it just prints out all APRS messages. Um, another uh, big one that we added recently is uh, position beaconing. Uh, so I can send my location, <clears throat> let me go into the settings real quick to show you how you set it up. Um, you'll notice under APRS, you can turn on beacon my position and that will do it automatically on a five minute uh, timer. So every five minutes it'll beacon your position to the active frequency um, and you can choose whether you'd like it to be your exact position or your approximate position. Um, and again, this all continues to work fully offline with no cellular connection or anything. It's just using your phone's GPS. Um, so I'm going to keep it on approx and I'm going to do a manual beacon. So here in chat, there's a new little uh, pin icon in the lower right near where you would send a message. If you tap the pin instead of sending a message, it beacons your location once. And so anybody who gets that message would now be able to tap on the pin and see uh, where I was when I sent that message. Now, if I turn, if I were to turn on beaconing and settings, it would send that kind of message every five minutes. Um, so if you're, you know, driving to a ham fest or something and you want to beacon, you know, where you are on your way, you can turn on beaconing, hop in the car, let this thing go, and every five minutes it'll send an update. Um, so those are the APRS updates. There's still a lot more we'd like to do, but this is a, uh, uh, a pretty good improvement already. Um, oh, there's actually one last thing I wanted to show. So <clears throat> uh, in APRS, if I am, I have another test device that I'm looking at over here. Um, we also added uh, message acknowledgement. So let's say you and a buddy are using APRS to chat. Uh, you send them a message, just like on SMS. Now uh, we acknowledge the message. So you get like the little check mark. So let's see if I can send a test message. Uh, let me see what. What did I use here? KB4P-7. I'm going to send a test message to my other device like this. And now watch, when I send it, you're going to see the message pop up, but then you should, and I'll, I'll turn the audio up just a little bit, you should hear the acknowledgement and then you should see a check mark appear. So let's go ahead and do that. There. Okay, so that that little uh, audio that you heard there was the acknowledgement packet and you, you notice that after that, the check mark appeared next to my message. That means that um, my other radio acknowledged that it received it. So it's a good way, again, if you're out hiking or out in uh, you know, uh, POTA activation or something, you can actually check that the person you sent it to got the message, which is a, a pretty nice uh, kind of quality of life thing. Um, okay, so those are all the APRS things. Uh, moving on, I'm gonna go back into settings. There are some other settings that were added since the original release um, under the advanced section. So you can now choose whether you want wide bandwidth, which is 25 kilohertz, or narrow bandwidth, which is 12.5 kilohertz. Um, you can also uh, limit your transmit frequency to either 148, which is the default, or 146 megahertz. Um, it's because uh, hams in certain regions uh, might have a different max frequency. For example, in the UK, I believe it's 146 megahertz. And so if you just want that little extra safety and you're in one of those regions, you can change it so it won't let you transmit above 146. And then finally, um, a feature that was requested quite a bit uh, because the microphone audio can be low uh, at times is there's now a mic gain boost option. Um, I actually just leave it on high. I think that sounds quite good, uh, but you could play around with it and find something that you like. Uh, so if you had a, a test unit that you were playing around with, but you just didn't like that your transmit audio was low, give the mic gain boost setting a try. And I think you'll, I think you'll be pretty happy with um, how it sounds now. So there's the new settings. Um, there's another thing that I can't uh, easily demonstrate you know, on the fly here, but I did want to mention, there's now a firmware updater built into the Android app. So whenever we release a new version of the firmware, uh, which is pretty frequently since we, you know, are, there's a lot of people working on it and there's a lot of improvements coming out. All you need to do is update the Android app. And then when you start it up, it will pop up and say, there's a new firmware available. Would you want to install it? You just tap install and it takes a few minutes and you've got the latest firmware on your KV4B HT. Um, so no more plugging it into the computer. Uh, it's just all self-contained now. Uh, you may notice I didn't have to do anything to keep the screen on. Uh, the screen stays on now while the app is open. You can, of course, always put your phone to sleep like you always could with the power button if you don't want that. Um, but people like to use it as a scanner, put it on their desk, You know, just kind of have it on during the day and they didn't want the screen shutting off. 
Um, or if you're using APRS and you're just monitoring the traffic, you might want your screen to stay on, so it stays on by default now. Uh, there were a lot of audio issues that we discovered. Um, in particular, after my first set of videos, uh, the really good ESP32 dev boards that I had been using, um, they sold out like within a week of the project going live. Um, and there's lots of dev boards out there, but it turns out that pretty much all the other ones have um, audio issues of some sort. Um, and so really a big part of the work over the past month or two has been getting samples of all those problematic ones and finding workarounds to get it to work great. Um, and I'm happy to say that now the audio, at least on all of the test devices that I have, sounds great. Um, those that previously had any kind of clicking or skipping audio or any of that, they all sound smooth and clear now. Um, so if you built one uh, a couple months ago and you didn't like the receive audio quality, um, update your app, update your firmware, and there's a really good chance that it's going to sound good now. Um, we did learn that the little small connectors in my, in my original uh, video are not necessarily the best because they kind of pick up RFI pretty easily, uh, radio interference, which can also affect audio. So um, on the website, on the quick start page, this is the recommended option now. It's just a little USB cable that's better shielded. Um, and it actually has a side benefit of since it's a little cable, it kind of acts as a little counterpoise. <laughs> and it, it can improve your reception as well. So you get better audio and better reception um, by using that. Um, but give it a try if you had bad audio in the past. The audio should be so much better now. So those are all the updates. I want to talk a little bit about um, what's next. Let me stop my screen recording here. Um, <clears throat> I want to talk about a couple of things that are coming up. Um, as I kind of mentioned at the beginning, there's, a, there's many new versions of the PCB that are um, already available and some that are coming up. So the biggest change is the 2.0 version of the PCB, which one of our community members, uh, Smitty Halibut, uh, designed, again, a professional electronics engineer. Um, and it is much, much better than the one that I originally designed. Um, I have a, a prototype here that I've been playing around with. Um, and one of the cool features that this one has is it has, um, I don't know if you can see or hear that, but it has a uh, push to talk, physical push to talk button. So you can still use the button on the screen if you don't want to use that. But if you're the kind of person who wants to click it, um, you know, on your when you're holding your phone, you'll have that option if you get the 2.0 uh, kit, which is already on the site. Um, it has lots of other bells and whistles too, just better designed in general, uh, better power handling and whatnot so that you know noise doesn't get into the wrong parts of the circuit. Um, it has a multicolor LED that you can program if you want to hack it to do whatever you want it to do. Um, all kinds of cool stuff. So there's the 2.0 PCB already available. Um, he's already ordered the, the components for it, and I think he plans to ship them out in January. So uh, get in on that if you're interested in that. Um, I'm also working on a revision to the existing PCB, so the one that, that looks more like this. Um, so the latest that I have available for you to get on the site is 1.7B, um, which is in pretty good shape. But I have also uh, designed uh, a set of 1.8 PCBs. So not fundamentally different than the old one, um, but what it does is it incorporates, I was putting down the doggy there, um, <clears throat> it incorporates uh, an improved VHF low pass filter that one of the community members uh, designed and uh, tested for us. And um, it's meant to significantly improve power output, like about double the power output. Um, it's only a one watt radio, so the more of that one watt that you can get out, it's gonna make a big difference. Um, and it also, um, in their testing, they found that their new filter improves sensitivity significantly, like somewhere between 10 and 20 dB. So like major improvements in uh, reception quality. Um, so I'm still waiting for those prototypes to arrive. Um, when I have them, I'll make them available on the site, assuming all goes well. Um, but if you want those improvements now, go get the 2.0, which is already on there. So we're just gonna have lots of options. It's an open source project. You can decide um, which one's right for you. Um, the other thing that's going to be in 1.8 uh, is I created three versions of it that have different spacing for the ESP32 dev modules because some people got some that were narrower, um, some people got some that were 30 pins instead of 38, and so I'm going to have three variations. The regular size that I started with, the narrow size, and the 30 pin. Um, they all will work exactly the same, they just have different footprints. So if you got one of those ESP32s that doesn't fit in the existing PS PCB, uh, keep your eyes open for 1.8. Um, which I'll uh, hopefully, if prototypes go well, I'll be posting on the site in the next few weeks. And then finally, I just want to shout out to the community. So since I originally launched the project in early October, 
um, the Discord chat where we have you know lots of active discussions, both people using the project, helping each other out, figuring out problems, contributing new features and case designs and whatnot. Um, our Discord has over 1,300 people in it and a lot of really active people. Um, so if you're on the fence and you just kind of want to learn more about it or you have questions, jump into the Discord. Um, you can find the link to the Discord on the website, kv4p.com, either on the Quick Start or the Contribute page. There's a link to the Discord. Um, we'd love to help you out, answer your questions. Um, I would really love, you know, we've already had a lot of people contribute to the project. So clearly, you know, this amazing 2.0 PCB is an amazing contribution. This case actually is from another uh, community member. This is a new case designed with the clicky buttons on the side. Um, people have been helping with the firmware and Android improvements. Um, the two things I would most love extra help with, if any of you are into this kind of thing, um, I don't currently have too many people contributing on the Android app side. So if you're a Java developer and you're interested in adding really cool uh, modern ham radio features to this thing, um, let me know and I'd be happy to give you a run through of how it's built and, and how you can contribute to the project. I also would love different 3D case designs. So if any of you are good 3D modelers and think you can do better than my basic <laughs> rectangular uh, box look here, which I think is okay, but you know, it could be a lot better. Um, you know, hey, like I said, the community member made this one. Uh, I think this one's pretty cool, uh, you know, and they're working on other variations as well. I would love for there to be a whole bunch of case options. Um, so if you think that's something you're good at, uh, jump in the Discord and uh, we'll get you set up so you can contribute those and, and get those on the site. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, it went a little bit longer than I expected, but I wanted to give you a rundown of everything that's improved over the past three months of the project. Um, thanks for all the support, and uh, I look forward to more contributors and more people playing around with the project. Have a good one, 73.